Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel Health Q, the place where my mission is to motivate you to look at the brighter side of the health. In today's video, I'm going to tell you what is the right time to start exercises after you get Bell's palsy. So, if you want to know when to start exercise once you have got Bell's palsy, make sure to watch this video till the end. So, let's begin. Friends, Bell's palsy is a form of temporary paralysis that happens due to affection of your 7th cranial nerve or else your facial nerve which is responsible for your facial functions like your facial expressions, taste sensation in your front tongue, your salivation as well as your lacrimation which means the tearing that happens in the eyes. Now whenever there is episode of Bell's palsy there is either pressure or is inflammation in your seventh cranial nerve which kind of blocks the impulses that comes from the brain and don't allow these impulses to reach to the right muscle area and this blockage causes temporary paralysis of your facial nerve. Now basis of the level of nerve damage that has happened on your facial nerve depending on that the results would be seen or as you can say you will recover accordingly i have already made a video in which i have explained what are the different levels of nerve injury and how much recovery you can expect basis this level of nerve injury if you have got mild injury or is mild compression on your facial now you might recover with within 15 days to one month of time or else even sometimes three months but if you have got second or third degree of nerve injury, then it might take more than six months for you to see the signs of recovery. Hence, these signs of recovery are very crucial to understand how much you will recover. Now, the biggest mistake that patients make while they are in the early days of Bell's palsy is out of stress and out of fear. What they try to do is they try to do more and more of exercises on facial muscle. They tend to force movements on the paralyzed side which is a very harmful thing to do so in this video i would try to explain you at different stages of bell's palsy what kind of exercises you should do and what kind of exercises you should refrain from now the first stage of bell's palsy the initial stage or the acute stage of bell's palsy we also call it in medical terms as flaccid stage flaccid means completely paralyzed no movement at all mostly you will be in this flaccid stage from day one to somewhere around one month or even sometimes more than one month but this is the flaccid stage which is the most important or is crucial phase for you to allow your nerve to recover the maximum recovery in the nerve happens during this phase hence this phase is the most important phase in bell's palsy situation if you want better recovery from your bell's palsy make sure that you take care of your facial muscles very much during this time be very cautious and very mindful in doing anything that is related to your face. Always follow the advice of your practitioner or else your doctor and follow just those advice. Don't try to do home therapies, home remedies or some self-medication at this point of time. Flaccid stage is a stage where you should mostly give time for your body to heal to get out of the inflammation or is the injury that has happened. This is the time where your body needs maximum amount of rest. Hence, make sure that you do not do any forceful exercises at this point of time. You should completely refrain from doing any kind of voluntary facial movements during this point of time. Because if you do that, what happens is you are trying to force your nerve, regenerating nerve to send impulses. But when the nerve is damaged and you are forcing this nerve to send impulses, what it will do is instead of going in the right direction, it will try to branch out in different places, which in future leads to synkinesis. What will happen is mass movements. Mostly these movements wouldn't be from the affected side or as the affected muscle. But these would be the movements which has been facilitated by the normal side which is absolutely not expected and required during Bell's palsy. Hence the most important things that you should do in flaccid stage of Bell's palsy is first and the most important one that is eye care. Make sure to put your eye drops on time. Make sure to stay away or else protect your eyes from any kind of dust, air or else any harsh light. Also make sure to patch your eyes or else cover your eyes with the help of eye taping in order to make sure that your eyes are getting completely closed which is mostly not happening in the early phase of Bell's palsy and 
Apart from eye care, the next thing that's important during this phase is massage. Since this part of your face is completely drooped, which means there's no uh, no strength present, the muscles will drop down, which kind of affects its flexibility. Hence, in order to maintain good blood supply and good flexibility on your facial muscle, make sure that you massage your face regularly. Massaging not only relaxes your facial muscle, it increases blood circulation on your facial area and also reminds your muscles to move in the right direction. So make sure to do massage on a regular basis. Apart from the massage on your entire face, next thing that you should do is stretching of your facial muscles, especially stretching on the non-affected side or as the normal side. Now what happens is when this side of the face is completely paralyzed, the normal side of the face has to work harder in order to maintain facial movements and they tend to get more tighter. That's why these group of muscles, which is the normal side of muscle will be more tight and pulled upwards. Hence, it's important that in order to bring back the symmetry of your facial muscles, you stretch your non-affected side as well as affected side. The only thing, the difference in the way in which you do the stretching would be on this side, you have to put one thumb inside and another finger here and then you have to pull. So this way you're going to stretch your normal side and for the affected side what you're going to do is you're going to stretch the muscles not only from outside but also inside but here the stretching should be directed towards the midline so lifting up the face and bringing to the center bringing these muscles to the center bringing this muscles to the center bringing this muscles to the center and also internally doing massage to your facial muscle also stretching the internal muscles something like this so you can do this for five to ten times then on the mouth like this so this is what you are supposed to do for flaccid stage after flaccid stage, the next stage of Bell's palsy is called as paretic stage. Paretic means weakness, which means that there is definitely recovery, but the affected side facial muscles are weaker compared to the non-affected side. And this is the right time actually to start facial exercises. Since the nerve has recovered to an extent here, all you need to do is you have to now train these muscles and strengthen these muscles. So most of the exercises have to be started during this phase. But one thing that you should keep in mind is you are at higher risk of developing synkinesis during this phase since you would be doing some forceful activity. Hence, you have to be mindful, watchful while doing facial exercises during the paretic stage or as the stage where there is incomplete recovery of your facial muscles. So make sure that you start exercises, but also keep an eye that you are not developing synkinesis. The way you can find out that whether you have developed synkinesis or not is, just try to raise your eyebrows. If you feel that while raising your eyebrows, your mouth is moving, that means it's synkinesis. If you are trying to frown and if your mouth is moving, that means it's a synkinesis. If you are trying to blink your eyes and if your mouth is moving, that means it's a synkinesis. If you are trying to smile and if your eyes are getting smaller, that means it's synkinesis. If you are trying to pout, and your eyes are getting smaller, that means it's a synkinesis. Or any kind of mouth movement you do, which makes your eyes smaller, that means it's synkinesis. If these kind of involuntary movements are happening, definitely you are developing synkinesis at this time. But if you identify synkinesis early and you start acting on it, there are very high chances that you can control it and you won't get, or else you can get out of synkinesis very easily. After paretic stage, the next stage is the synkinetic stage. Unfortunately, many patients who have got second or third degree of facial paralysis do not recover completely. Although the number is small, but these patients suffer a lot. For them, there's not only incomplete recovery, oral partial recovery. Along with that, there is synkinesis development. This is the time the strategy is to first control synkinesis to its maximum potential. And after 
synkinesis has been managed then only the strengthening exercises has to be started mostly the focus is on movement control and relaxation techniques movement control basically focuses on avoiding synkinetic movements while doing the natural movements so chewing gum activities trying fa forceful facial movements has to be avoided at this time but these needs to be gradually incorporated in the exercise program while making sure that the synkinesis is not happening Hence, it's important that whenever you are doing treatment for your Bell's palsy or whenever you are trying to do treatment for your Bell's palsy, take your professional help. Remember, treatment of any kind of health condition is not one size fit all approach. Every individual is different, so does every patient. Hence, it's very important that treatment is customized basis your requirement. Hence, make sure that you take help of a professional and then start the treatment. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, make sure to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.